Hi, my name is Dave. Today I'm going to show you something very unusual and very rare. Uh, these are two Goto Kogaku satellite telescopes from the late 1950s, 1957, 58. Uh, extremely rare. Uh, before I go much further, I'd like to point out that what you see here is not all 100% authentic. Uh, here are a couple of side-by-side -side pictures of the originals, or at least the ads for the originals, and these scopes that you see here. You probably noticed in the pictures that these setting circles are completely wrong. They're nothing like uh, what the original would have had. So that kind of gives this away as uh, this is all um, what I call a semi-replica. It looks a lot like the original, but it is not clearly the original. Um, now, that means that this one is the original. But look at these bases. These wooden bases are... Um, this one is original, this one is a replica. And the reason I did that is because this scope came on this base, uh, which is, as you look in the pictures, you can see this is the base for the equatorial type. So what I did was I, I tried to make a replica of this mount to fit with this scope. Um, and this, of course, is an authentic wooden base for an equatorial GOTO satellite scope. There's a lot more behind both of these scopes, so I'll show you more. Let's talk about the interesting design choices GOTO made. First of all, this is what I would consider to be the premier satellite telescope. A Unitron 50 millimeter, big honking eyepiece here, deluxe setting circles, everything, the very best overkill, um, but basically a satellite telescope designed to be aimed in a certain position, watch for a satellite as it's crossing the sky. This GOTO uh, equatorial is perplexing to me. Why would you do that? Why would you need an equatorial to watch for something that's crossing the sky? I mean, you can position it here and position it there and and, and, and watch the sky just like with this little guy, but the need for an equatorial is, is well, it's actually uh, kind of gets in the way. I mean, an equatorial is not very helpful here. What you need is something like this, an Altaz with a setting circle, preferably with an azimuth as well, although I guess that's not that important, but you need an altitude setting circle and something like that, and you fix it down and watch as something crosses the sky. That's what they were for. I don't know why they did this, but uh, boy, I love this scope. It's charming, completely wonderful. Um, I would love to have a real one, but I'm, I'm delighted to have my little imitation. It's it just as cute as it can be. I, I absolutely love this cute little equatorial mount. As super superfluous as it might be, it's charming. Let's have a closer look at this little equatorial version, my um, imitation. And I put setting circles on here that are they're quite different. I, I had a hard time trying to figure out how to get setting circles that would look like the original Gotos. So I just put these on there um, and I don't know why you would need setting circles for a satellite scope. I mean, for a little miniature telescope, <laughs> it's completely captivating and uh, wonderful. You can move the scope around and reconfigure it. You can change it so that it's like this. And if you want to, you know, it's uh, change the balance and all. This little thing down here, by the way, that's a hunk of metal designed strictly to counterweight this thing. Um, <laughs> is there a great big beautiful eyepiece on here? And mind it, my imitation is not as good as the original, I'm sure, but 
it works pretty well. The original objective in this scope would have been a 44 millimeter f 2.8. It was a triplet, <laughs> can you believe? A little triplet lens um, package in there at f 2.8, semi apochromat according to their specifications. What a piece of optics that must have been. My imitation is a, uh, it's a projector lens. It's about the same thing, f3.2, not quite as fast, but it, uh, it works. Actually, it works okay. It's not bad. I mean, it's, it's clearly not the same as an original. I would dearly love to see one of these originals. The big eyepiece on there was also quite spectacular on the original. So I'd love to see one of those. Uh, mine works and it's uh, cute, but it's an imitation. It's not the real thing, that's for sure. Let me show you what this looks like at some different positions here. Move it around, you can see what that's like. Looks a little different there. And of course, this thing, you can adjust the latitude. Let's go about there, something like that. I love a miniature telescope, a, little, a miniature Goto. Woo! <laughs> Got to be one of my favorite things in the entire world. I just wish this was the real one. Let's have a closer look at the Goto Scope Junior on my replica mount. This mount here is replica. And I did the best I could to kind of mimic what I saw in the ads, as you can see. This is all the real deal here, though, this upper portion. One of the interesting things about this scope is that it, it came with a kind of a somewhat crude setting circle made out of a stamped piece of metal. I mean, it would work fine. Um, and it has an altitude setting circle but no azimuth a lot of the uh, even the inexpensive ones had would have had some sort of a circle here there was apparently no circle for this one um, you kind of just get what you get and it's got these interesting little capstan bolts to attach it here's the back of it i'll show you a close-up of that Let me show you how you reconfigure this. You can configure this. These two screws, these two uh, bolts come out here and you can reconfigure it in a, a more upright kind of a normal, con what I would call normal configuration. Let me show you what that looks like. First you have to mess with these little cap stands, which is a big pain. Anyway. There you have it, a simple operation of about 20 minutes and you've got this reconfigured. It didn't really take 20 minutes, it took about 5 minutes, but what a pain. Mostly because of these little uh, capstan things. I have, I have no idea why Goto decided to do that. Maybe it was for balance because this thing, although it's balanced perfectly here, it's got a nice big chunk of metal back here to balance this. It's balanced very nicely. But when you have this tilted back like that, see how it wants to tilt a little bit? Because of the weight of the eyepiece. So, I, I don't know. Having it configured in that other way is really very strange, very unusual. I'd like to know what was going through the mind of those folks when they designed it that way. Let me dismantle this scope and show you what it looks like. First of all, let's start with the eyepiece. Uh, the eyepiece focuses like so. This can be used to orient the eyepiece, of course, but it also just uh, unscrews to remove it. Now, maybe you'll be able to see the two little 
Looks like two little brass wires, two little very fine brass wires inside. Hopefully you'll be able to see those. If we look inside here, I think you should be able to see the mirror inside there. It's a rectangular mirror and its coatings are no longer perfect, of course, but not bad, considering, <laughs> considering this thing is uh, 60 years old or so. Uh, let's remove the back end of this. This is a very heavy piece of metal, probably steel, designed to counterbalance the thing. It's got this uh, lovely writing on the back, Goto's Moonwatch Telescope. And of course back here we have the adjustment screws for the mirror. We have uh, three adjustments and a, a fourth lock, kind of an adjustment thing. So that adjusts the mirror pull off the objective. There we have the objective. I'll show you a close-up to show you the positions of the spacers. Let me see if I can show you the spacers on this thing. I'll try and hold this in the right way so that you'd be able to see it. Uh, hopefully you can see that there's one spacer right about over here. And then you'll notice, hopefully, that there are two spacers in fairly normal positions over there and over here. And then <laughs> there's an interloper, a little weird one over here. What the heck is that about? The answer is, I don't know. It does appear to be original. It looks like this has not been tampered with. So I think that's original, and I have no idea why they did that. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at these two very interesting Goto Kogaku satellite telescopes from the late 1950s. Thank you for watching.